So what, yeah, what, what's your take on tips as well too for all uh, the guys out there like because I know being in when I started working in the branch the first thing was what's the tips and I used to work, come to the race course when we had meetings and stuff when I was working in the branch and when I used to come back what's the tips to yeah. what are they saying it's do a, you uh, it's uh, a good question and I want you to back me up when I finish giving my answer for me the 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 the, 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 the slogan that I live by is that Welcome to another edition of Horses to Follow for KwaZulu Natal with Andrew Harrison and myself Warren Lee Inferna and we are sitting in the new refurbished flagship track and ball branch called the Finishing Post at 15 Mitchell Crescent Gravel. Andrew, how are you? I'm good, Wah. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit late this this party. Yeah, well, we uh, had things to do and uh, errands to run, but we're here and I had to get you from the, the capital yeah, down no, to the coast. It was a bit of a drive because uh, I think the whole of bloody Joburg's arrived. Oh, yes, for I the long weekend. Petrol. I was in the third in the queue. The long weekend. The Joburg yeah. people, uh, well, let me, the, before we talk to Thurvin and, and, and greet him, Thurvin. Oh. <laughs> Are you d- <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Joburg people, the moment they, there's a half a holiday, boom, they're out the coast. I suppose you can't well, blame uh, them. They either got too much money or they don't work too hard. There's <laughs> yeah. not, not, not much to do in Joburg. Is I that feel. what it is? Yeah. Not much to do in Joburg. Okay. <laughs> Thuban, uh, welcome it, to the podcast. Thuban Thank Pillay. you for having me. Yes, Pillay. Um We'll find out who you are and how you are and what you are in a moment. Uh, so let's just introduce you to the guest, is Thuvan Pillay, and uh, he'll tell us the rest in a moment. Also, our, our sponsors, very important, MGT Solar, Megatech. Uh, they've, you know, they're with us. And, and, well, they've uh, stood by us. They've stood yeah. by us, and uh, I believe that there have been a few uh, inquiries and a few bites at the cherry. And I was talking to Eddie. He was overseas. He's back now. We'll get him on the show again in the near future. But uh, MGT Solar, the insert at the beginning of the podcast and at the end of the podcast, a lovely advert, isn't it? No, no, and I think it's a good thing to get involved in because uh, solar energy is the way to go. I mean, green energy, green energy, that's the way. Okay, now. Save the environment. Save the environment. Okay, now, you're going to be put on ice for a moment, you don't mind. Oh, good. I'll (laughs) I'll go for a beer. (laughs) Let's talk to you, and there's a lovely bar facility here to do just that. There's no beers. Go for a beer or an ice cold Coke beverage or something. Mm. It's a wonderful facility. But let's attack you now. Let's fire the questions at you. Thuvan is our colleague, and uh, he works for Gold Circle Track and Ball, as we all do. But we want to find out a bit more about him. First of all, tell us your name, your age, where do you live? Those are the first three questions. Okay, so just like any interview. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just like you're in an interview. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so Tuvan Pillay, right. yeah, from Chatsworth. Yes. Born and brought up. Uh, okay. You know the fraternity with Chatsworth Panthers as well, too, with regards. So I, uh, as soon as I left school, I slap bang into the industry. Okay. Uh, yeah, I started off as a clerk, uh, worked at part-time whilst I was studying and stuff. And then I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, mainly because of the the people interaction that it brought because you know with this industry you're interacting completely with people of of different walks of life on a daily basis and that's what i really enjoyed most and then i had an opportunity here to come to the head office um which i uh, duly obliged because it was coinciding with what i studied and stuff like that and uh, yeah, it looks like the rest is history. I'm here now, and uh, yeah. How many years have you been with Gold Circle and Track and Ball? Three years. Three uh, years. Okay, yeah, so three years. Young in the company. A little bit old now, you would say. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <three. shit. laughs> How long are you here for? I've what? Been, I've been uh, with Gold Circle. If you could believe it, can you believe it? Seven years. Can you believe it? Time flies when you're having fun. I, huh? I always seven say. Years. Seven years. Can you believe right. it? And I you, Mister Mr. Mister Harris? Been here sixteen years. There we go. Sixteen years. He's about to retire. This old goat. Well, it looks like not even a day over thirty. <laughs> <laughs> Please tell the bosses that. Uh, <laughs> so 65, he's retiring in January. We're going to miss him. But yeah, you've been here how many years? 16. Been here 16. 16. I worked for the witness in Marisburg for 25. Yeah. Sure. I've just actually done the calculations. Not seven, six years that I've been here. I remember the day on my first day at work, I arrived. Yes, I know. You just arrived in, into my office. And yeah. And I said, hello, Mr. What Harrison. What are you doing here? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hello, Mr. Harrison. How are you, Mr. Harrison? Yes, sir. No, sir. No, you just we insult one another. No, just look at me. So, uh, okay, three years, six years. Uh, 16 did you say yeah 16 years uh, but we don't want to talk about your retirement because that's going to be a very sad day so you know you were talking about the, the 
punters is from Chatsworth, and, and we talk about all punters. Yes. But, you know, there's the, the, the Indian community, I mean, I was born and bred in Stanger. Oh, so, okay. So the Indian community are very, very close to my heart. I, you know, I, I've been brought up with, with the Indian community. I've been brought up on their food, which is by far the best food in the world. You're talking about the bunnies. The, the bunnies, the curries, <laughs> yes. the, uh, the, the, the uh, briyanis. Briyanis and uh, the jalebis. Yeah, and all okay, those yeah. Beautiful things. Uh, You're going in depth with the Indian food, yeah. Absolutely. I, like I it. mean, my friends used to be eating purity. I used to be eating jalebis. Oh, barfi. Barfi <laughs> and all that. So, <laughs> the, so the Indian community are very really close to my heart. And. and all punters, Andrew, whether it's, uh, you know, uh, of all, all across no, the world. Punters, yeah. punters yeah. are diversity. like a family, though, Correct. You know, especially if you can get a place going like this going. It becomes a community. I know, like in Marisburg at the track and ball. You've been to the Marisburg track and ball, yes, have you? I know. Yes. The one place. in Kreling Street. Yes, yeah, the blokes who live there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. yeah. yeah. Well, it, becomes a, it becomes, as you say, a family. You know, the, the, the older guys that are retired... You know, it's such a day out for them. They yeah. come and they have your meal, you have a drink, you got your TVs, you got your mates. I a mean, place to chill with your friends. I absolutely. think that's what you want to make it. Like absolutely. a more homely, a home away from home, you could say. So, but before we talk about the finishing post, you, you, what is your role and or your position at Track and Ball? So I'm in operations, um, the operations controller over there. And uh, just the facilitation of Track and Ball and where we need it to be with whatever projects we have going on and the day-to-day -day running of our... Because we have 11 branches. Uh five track and wall branches and we manage three subsidiary companies easy fund bets and more and was okay. so just making sure everything is is in check and the way we need to be also in, in a growth factor as well for for track and wall you work uh, with the, the likes of colin Furry. yeah the what management side man. yeah colin Furry, vin and naidu yes hey really okay. he's the one who actually gave me the opportunity colin well, Furry. be careful of vina he's, he's a bit bigger than you yeah 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 <laughs> i always told him if i take him in a fight it'll be a stab contest <laughs> whatever <laughs> be just yeah, yeah. <laughs> a stab contest yeah. <laughs> Um, would be yeah, a Colin and the whole Fari family also rich in horse racing yes, and, yes. and, and, and been, uh, been bookmakers their whole lives. Yeah, good people. You good people. are, uh, you can see, uh, we follow you on Facebook. I'm the noisy one in the office, in our office, although we don't often get to the office nowadays with all this COVID yes. nonsense, but you seem to be the funny one, the happy one, the bubbly I, one. I try my best at, at times. So yeah, I just is there a serious side to you? There, there is, but I like to keep it hidden because, you know, I look at when I look at all walks of life, as we can see, a lot of people are going through stuff. So yes. if you can just have a laugh to the midst of all this chaos we got uh, going on right now, why not? Yeah, and I that's agree. the way I, I we, 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 if we try and have a good of a, a bit of a laugh and, and you got to, you got to do yeah, it. I know, but we, we, I think what we've got is, they say in the, in the old words, black humor, you know. If someone died, you say too bad. You know? <laughs> 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 or dark humor nowadays, yeah, as we call humor, it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Black humor. <laughs> yeah. Thurman, let's talk about this facility that we're sitting yes. in here. The flagship of track and ball, so to say. Uh, now. Okay, so this is the flagship. How yeah. many track and ball outlets are there? We have five. We have wow. one in uh, Chatsworth, Denmark, right. Peter Maritzburg, yes. Stanger, Umlazi. Um, Danma, Stanger, PMB, Umlazi, and Overport, which is now the finishing post. So we okay. moved our Overport license down here. Okay, okay. Uh, just because we saw the potential being closer towards Gold Circle, here on the race course, right on the finishing post, it just made it ticked all the boxes. Yeah, it certainly did tick all the boxes. And it, you, you guys have, have put in, you know, uh, some, some w w what for, for the, the viewers and the punters that used to come here yes. to this facility, name me one or two things that you know why should they come back why should they come back here what can you offer them that they didn't get last time i think one of the main things will be security uh prior to this for security purposes we just had a gate and a door here not many cameras on the outside so gold circle helped us out with that initiative where they put in cameras across the whole race course covering all gate areas with that new facial recognition technology okay just to give punters a peace of mind when you're parking here outside or gold circle has allowed us on race uh, non-race day meetings to park on the course well that was the next question yeah so you, there is a facility on the inside of on the, the inside of the course yeah. or on the outside and then you, you just walk under the tunnel into the no facility. walk through the gate yeah, on the skates on the on the top. Yeah. Right, but through the you know where the horses go down. Yes, yes. Yeah, so you just walk through those gates. Not because under the tunnel is too far. But no, but what I'm saying is, if you're are, are you on the on the on the grandstand side. On the grandstand okay, side, so perfect. Just, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. My lingo with the naming of the places is not so good yet. I'm getting there. Grandstand side, okay. I'm, I'm <laughs> happy with that. Uh, will there be 
security guards at the gate on the roadside? Yes. So we yes, there will be a, there will be a, a security guard on the roadside. We're going to have two security guards inside, one by the front gate, one roving around, just to give that sense of protection. Yeah. We're also adding a turnstile gate as well, too yeah. bi-directional, just to make that ease as well, to know that you have that sense of security or that comfort, knowing that hey, we're trying to take on more precautions and keeping you all safe. Safety is a hell of a thing, you know. Whether you yeah, go no, home, but the, yeah. But the, yeah. Thing, the thing is, with, with, with totes now, I mean, the, yeah. it's an easy source of cash. Yeah. Um, so they be, they become sort of desperados. I mean, we had people break into the next door neighbours. They they stole the, the copper piping off their. The yeah, it's stealing everything yeah, now. Off yeah, the uh, bathroom. Yeah, so I, I mean, saw, yeah, I saw so a video this morning. People are desperate. Eh? I saw a video yeah. this morning of. of uh, Robert's trying to get into a tops, I think, near Hillary somewhere. Oh, yeah. that's, what, that's my me, though. I hope they didn't yeah. see my face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was you trying to get a couple of lagers. <laughs> but the point I'm making is that security has become a must for everything. Yes. Whether you're at home, whether you go on holiday, whether you're in your workplace. I mean, even when you go to a supermarket, you want yes. to be and know that you're safe. So it's good that the that, that, that track and ball have put the emphasis on security. Uh, so that's one of the, the things that they can get you is good security. And once they're in the venue... Uh, Customer service. Let's say as a part, because um, I don't know whether I can say this, because but maybe I'm now in operations, I'm in the outlet. I take a few bets. Yes, uh, well, we all do. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't, uh, if you don't, uh, we should take a few bets. Yeah, so yeah, it's, it's like being a it's like being a cigarette rep and you don't smoke. No. <laughs> or it's like being a baker and you don't eat cake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, I've been racing, I don't bet. What's uh, the problem? Of course you do. I've seen you. Yeah. <laughs> so I think customer service is what foremost is needed here, and. Me being from the branch, I realize it's one of the key factors in making the punter feel much more at ease. That homely type feeling, giving him a good conversation, allowing him that ease to conversate as well. Yeah. As opposed to just being more robotic in a sense where you're going there, taking your bet, putting the money in your pocket and walking away. So, Thuvan, how do you, you know, sometimes when it happens to me, so I'm talking from experience, sometimes when there's money involved and, and a punter may have just lost a bet or, or was close, and, and one can get grumpy. I do. Uh, it happened to me yesterday in the so last race. Yes. So you noticed, yes. You, uh, <laughs> so you noticed. No, he threw his keys across the room. Yesterday, uh, <laughs> the last race, I mean, I stood to win a lot of money. Uh, uh, I just needed that. Was it an exotic bet? No, no, it was a quartet the way I played it. Okay. And I, I went to Banker. The winner, Stratton's keeper, by banker Carl Hewitson's horse number two, I think it was, to run second, by field, by Ooh, field. Good and bet. Of course, Carl Hewitson, I played it aggressively. Carl Hewitson's yeah. horse unfortunately ran third. Anyway, and I was grumpy. I, I was grumpy for an hour afterwards. The question I'm trying to get to is how would you deal, how do you personally deal with, because money's involved, emotions are involved, how do you deal with it if a punter comes up to you and he's cross and he's grumpy? I mean, do you try and turn that situation to a positive one? 100%. So you try to simmer down the situation at first. Listen to his needs and listen to his query. I think listening is one of the key benefactors uh, and which a lot, of, a lot of clerks I see don't have that ability, but which Chuck and Ball is trying to change. So listening to his frustrations at first and finding key areas to work around it and giving him the reassurance that if it was the clerk's fault, for an example, it won't happen again. Yes. Because all of us are human at the end of the day and Correct. mistakes are bound to be made. So listening to the punter and then having a conversation just to assure him that this won't happen again in future time and we'll try and give him the best possible service so i think that's one of the that's yeah okay that's 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 good also we do it with some humor uh, yes. as well maybe yes. give him a chick's number uh, <laughs> if you see uh, <laughs> okay i'm coming <laughs> <laughs> talking talking you uh, i just want a picture first though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, talking, talking of betting um you you, you, everyone plays differently. Some are big punters, small punters. Any punter is a good punter, as far as I'm concerned. But you don't bet as often as I do, or I, I think Thuvan does. Yeah. But you do have your odd bet. Well, but you are, bet. and you, but you go to the races and you take your bets, and you might go to the Tote in Maritzburg and strike a bet. But you have had a, a betting facility that you haven't used for how many years? It's a big day today. It's Tell us why. Today. Tell us why. I've got a hundred grand. I'm going to put into my account. Now. Okay. Has, has the, I couldn't even remember the. Count number. So that's going to that, that, that's going to go into your track in history. That's going to go into your trackable gold circle account. Yes. Yeah, okay. So and you know with the, the the gold circle tot accounts as well too. Linked. It's linked. Yeah. So if you deposit money in your tot account, you call in Telly Betting, okay. uh, and you just say you want to take a fixed odd bet or even a soccer bet or a lucky number bet. You just tell them you want to transfer over. They'll true. transfer you over to double one oh three one three one four double one double five, and then you through to our track and ball call center. So uh, it's oh three one. Three one four double one double five. That's for the fixed odds track and ball call center. And then oh three one three one four double one 
double one to use the tote uh, the tote facility. You're not even looking at the cards. So ah, I don't even. I know those numbers off by heart. Yeah, sure. Heart, absolutely. Off by heart. I dream about those numbers. Um, and they can link you, you know, either way. So, so today you're depositing money. We're gonna, we're we're we all, Thurman money? and I are going to come with you. We're going to enjoy I'm the uh, moment. Yes, because we're going to enjoy the money too as well. <laughs> 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 and then you're going to start to take a little PA and yeah, at least well, I'm retiring, so I'll have more time to study form. To study form. Okay, let's get back to uh, the track and ball uh, finishing post uh, facility here. If there's punters or, or public that uh, we like everyone to have a bet, and that's, of course, the business that we're in. Yes. But if they would like to come and enjoy an ice cold beverage, cold beer and a meal, are the food and beverage facilities going to be underway here? The, f- the food and beverage facilities are underway. The progress is almost complete. There's still a few more legalities to take place, but so Gold Circle is running the restaurant. So the Durban viewer, Chef Anthony, I think we all uh, yes, know him. Uh, yeah, he's oh excellent no, he's food. He's, he's involved. We might come in for a lunch. Every for a lunch, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Our offices are close. We can come and have we'll spend more time here than in the office. Yeah, no, no I'm no. glad for that. Do more of the podcast here. <laughs> 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 so yeah, we're gonna get the whole uh, the whole restaurant team from there over here on this side. They're gonna take over the whole kitchen area. They're and gonna run the bar as and well and too. And, and uh, Anthony's done a sterling job in the Durban View Room. Yeah, wow. Give them that yeah, credit. That good yeah, food, no. it's Even the curries there as well too. Like I'm delicious. surprised. Sure, man, better than my mum's. And I uh, can't tell her that. Oh, you don't tell Yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, if, if food and beverage facilities available. And so if you want to come in and watch racing and not have a bet, you've got can have lunch. You can, can have a lunch. Yeah, okay. will come. Proper menus. Different Different type, so it's not going to be that. So, to, to, to the punches that we are in the past, it won't be such an exorbitant menu with so many different things where you like spoil for choice per se for substandard food. So we're gonna quality as opposed to quantity. Yeah, that's what we're going that for. Because you know when yeah. you have 37 items on yeah. the menu, it becomes bad, to, uh, difficult to manage. Yes. I know. I've had 12 years in the hospitality industry. The, the smaller, the as you said, qu- quality, quality, not quantity. Perfect, perfect. So that and th- but it's n- safe to say we are will be increasing because at the end of the day, it's our punters' needs which are first. Yeah. So if you coming here and you want something different in the menu, we would look at the possibility of, of adding that on yeah. just to make your life much more easy or pleasant. And Stephen, what you must do is uh, uh, it's just a suggestion. You know every sort of four to five weeks or, f- or three change it you know yes, rotate yes. it because you come here you, you'll want to get punters that are going to come here regularly yes they don't want to have the same boring that redundancy yeah. of the yeah. meals you know you're coming here oh i'm getting bacon and eggs for breakfast will, they, will there be a breakfast Could it yes well so you're not going to see you know me i love my breakfast so oh good what, time, what, what time will you open in the yeah, morning what time do you guys open for we breakfast? will be open at nine okay so uh but yeah so say like half past nine ten o'clock for by the time everyone no, gets no, no, half past nine ten o'clock what time are you opening well, we open last yeah, we have, yeah, we're we just getting finalized. Yeah, yeah, so we're getting this. So give me your around know. the ballpark around figure. Around the ballpark. Yeah, around the ballpark. Yeah. Like the bottle store. <laughs> we don't open at 10 o'clock. He's getting a bit grumpy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what we'll do is we can come and enjoy a nice breakfast. A late, like, you know, early, uh, late uh, brunch. We can have yeah, 10 yeah. o'clock breakfast. No, yeah, it'll be fantastic. I only yeah. found out recently, sorry, sorry, was brunch. And I always thought it because it's, it's two words like breakfast and lunch. It's in between. Yes. But brunch is between lunch and supper. Yes. Is that correct? No, no, no brunch. No, brunch, br- no, brunch is, is, is break, break, breakfast, breakfast and lunch. lunch. Yeah, yeah, I don't know where I saw that or read that somewhere that it's between lunch and supper. And I no, thought, hang no, on to myself. No, okay, no, okay. No. That, that's, 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 uh, that's la supper. La supper. Yeah, okay. La supper. Oh, a little bit of the French brought that in. <laughs> oh, no. Good, good. <laughs> um, okay. What... Um, Next, I'm just trying to get my bearing straight. How did you uh, ask all our guests? Now, how did you get, I mean, have you always liked racing, gambling from a young age? You are young. I asked you how old you were. You, you dodged that question. Yeah, I did. Uh. So you, <laughs> I obviously, did. you obviously don't want the young ladies to get back. To know. Yeah. Or even the old ladies. He's a humorous guy. Hey? He's a humorous guy. But uh, no, thanks, uh, what thanks. we need to find out from you is um, so, uh, my yeah, dad. How did, you, how did you hear about horse racing? How did you know about this wonderful sport? So, so my dad was. Uh, an area manager for Gold Circle for uh, 35 years. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And he, uh, but hated punting. Hated punting completely. And then as soon as I finished school, my dad was always like, Tuvan, right, you can do, we'll, we'll get your study sorted out for you. But if you ever need money, you don't ever ask us. <laughs> you just make a plan. Whatever you do, you don't ask us for money. And then because uh, of this industry here, he had a friend in the, who was a bookmaker in Chatsworth and then uh, applied for a job there working in the tote. And uh, I worked there a few months and then they saw some uh, a slight ability that I had and he brought me over to the bookie side and uh, yeah and then I worked for him and then track and ball offered me a part-time job so all of this was part-time whilst I was studying and stuff and then uh, I degreed up and um, 
there was a uh, an offers job here and uh, i really enjoyed the industry because i enjoyed a good punt as well so. a little bit uh, <laughs> during my time and uh, i just i like to be really involved with so, people as so well so tell me what studies did you waste uh, I got a BCom in information management. Um, exactly, waste of shit. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say medicine, but then I said, hey, no, no, no. <laughs> let's go with the BCom for uh, now. <laughs> Dr. Pillay, I mean, Stephen. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Did you, uh, um, f- when you look at, do you, do, you, do you enjoy a soccer bet, any bet? I, I, you know, come to think about it, I, I'm, I'm a really big soccer fanatic. Okay. Uh, Liverpool, I bleed red. Oh yeah. No. Please hard. leave. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was going to be a selling point. I don't know. It's going <laughs> to turn out that way. And, um, I don't take soccer bets okay. and it's because twice I took soccer bets and once it was on my birthday and I'm thinking to myself and I was waiting for Napoli such a strong side they were playing at like a division 2 side in a cup game but they put a good side through and I had one out and one my last side left it's nine o'clock told my mates right we're going out we're gonna go to the toad we're gonna cash this ticket and we're gonna have a good time and Napoli go and draw and I said no uh, it's not soccer bets for me and and I'm a, I'm a favorite punter like okay. I always look at it because I'm, I'm, I'm a bookie man yes, uh, yes, not on yes. the toad side so oh boy, oh yeah, okay. here we go to the top of the board <laughs> top of the top yeah of the top of the board punter but okay. because if a horse is going to be a favorite I feel it's it's deserving some merit for being sure, so it'll sure, be very hard a, for me to back a horse which is not a favorite because I'd be I always think to myself hey if this horse is a favorite there's someone reasons is why. Yeah, there's, there's reasons someone who why, thinks yeah. this horse is going to win yeah. Yeah. but no reasons why they aren't favorites yeah yeah but you know there's a scary statistic that that I've learned as well that in in a race card 33% of the time favorites win only so 66% of the time they're losing yeah that's yeah. uh oh, that's a and here, a here's me still top of the board knowing that statistic <laughs> 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 uh, do you study form or do you yes do you, you, you I'm, I'm, a, I'm a proper uh, form puncher okay. and also uh, one tip that I, I like to small trainer big jockey Okay. So and I, and I saw this from one of my first when Anthony Del Pesh was riding a horse for a uh, CE Erasmus a Chris Erasmus and yes, it was okay. also called Sawbot and it was 16 to 1 and I don't know if you'll remember this horse back in the I day do it's remember, I do remember and I'm thinking to myself I'm looking at the board I'm saying CE Erasmus Anthony Del Pesh he probably paid him more than the stake to ride this horse here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I said, okay, I backed, oh, backed it. I put a few wins at 16 to 1. It, I think he shot into like 8 to 1 or something and he romped home. Yeah, so, so then I reckon. Yeah, no, every, everybody, yeah. Everybody's got their, their own sort of uh, methods <laughs> and, yes. and, yeah. and things. I remember we had a, a bloke in, when I worked with The Witness, who used to work in the works there. And he always had conspiracy theories. I mean, they were just ridiculous. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So no, now they used to win. You know, I also <laughs> as well. He, he, was, he was the big one in the flying vans. You know, Van Zyl, Van Boomer. Uh, oh. The other two I can't remember. Uh, Van, Van Vijk. And Van Vijk, yeah. Okay, okay. And he used to back those acts. And he always worked out as some, there was some skill in there somewhere. Okay. I mean, you look at the bloke you think, no, nah, you yeah, but talking junk, man. Yeah, but when it, you can pull it off sometimes, it's yeah, profitable. Yeah, but they win and then you come back and say, Andrew, did you back it? <laughs> <laughs> What's your play, Warren? How do you... Uh I am... Um, yeah, I, I do try and study a bit of form. I mean, I'm not the greatest form study, I'll be honest. Do with you when look I at time or weight class, uh, uh, strikes? Uh, a little bit of time. everything. Okay. Yeah, oh. bit of everything, you know, jockey tra- I, I'm a big... Uh, I'm a big who's in form and who's not in form. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, you know, if I, if I look at the winning form, I've got a lovely statistic there, their last 30 runners or the last 30 rides. You know, if I look at a jockey and it's last 30 rides, no win in one place, oh, I'll leave it up, you know. Um, it works. It sometimes it doesn't work. I, I also like to see merit rating drops. A uh, lot of different things, you know. And, and I, is in comparison because, okay, I'm from the bookie side, so I'll have to ask you this. Uh, do you punch on price as well too? Like if you see a lot of money coming for a favorite or, or a second favorite that's shortening I, it. I, I will I certainly refer to the betting. Um, I know that my uncle is, he, he follows the money. He waits to take his okay. bet right at the yeah. death. He <laughs> follows the flood of money yes. and, and he gets on uh, right at the death. For me, uh, I follow the money. If I see big money, I respect it. I have a look at the form and, I, and I, I certainly respect the money. If a horse drifts ever so slightly, it doesn't really bother me. For my uncle, if it drifts, he doesn't have a cent on it. Okay, uh, yes, but yes. But horses, you know, have drifted and won. Yes. So a very famous, I, I, I think, Bookie's quote is, a horse don't know its price. Correct. Yeah, yeah so, so I do, do certainly respect the betting. I do keep an eye on the betting, especially with first-timers. You know, if you yes. see a flood of... Um, but also what's nice is we, you know... We, we're able to, to look at comments in the computer form. We're able to, re, to, to watch TV shows. We're able to speak to trainers. We're able to speak to jockeys. So, you know, not all the time. Yeah. You know, you can't get to every trainer, every jockey, every comment, every runner. But you can certainly 
try and do your homework. But, you know, and if a horse is drifting like a barge, you try and get hold of the trainer and say there's a big drift, uh, you know, and some of the trainers say, well, they don't know why there's a drift. They fancy the horse. Yeah. Um, so what, yeah what, I, what's I, your take on tips as well, too, for all um, the guys out there? Like, because I know being in, when I started working in the branch, the first thing was, what's the tips? And I used to work, come to the race course when we had meetings and stuff when I was working in the branch. And when I used to come back, what's the tips, too? Yeah. What are they saying? It's Do a, you? I, uh, it's a, a good question. And I want you to back me up when I finish giving my answer. For me, the, 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 the slogan that I live by, is that in horse racing, the biggest certainty is the uncertainty. Okay. You've got, you know, you've got, I, I've gone for a, a, a race meeting where in, in, a, in, in, a, in a 10 horse field, I've spoken to five of the connections and, and of five different horses and they all think they can't lose. <laughs> okay. You know, <laughs> and, and yeah, it's, it's tough because the jockey wants to win, the trainer wants to win, the owner wants to win. You know, there's money to be made and you're racing for the prize. So, yeah. yeah, tips for me. I've had some very successful tips. I've had some hugely unsuccessful tips. Um, yeah, but it's just a case of who you happen to speak to at the time and they yeah. happen to be the right person. You know, yeah. you know I, I, also you're dealing with an animal. You're dealing, you're dealing with as as an I'm animal concerned. that yes. can't talk. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, the horse the other day of uh, Paul Peters up on the High Felt uh, Reunion. Now, Reunion had won its last two starts like this one easily okay. it was favorite Hands right. and on that day I had to speak to Mr. Peter about something not to do with horses and he said to me I know you like to have a bet just to let you know my best runner I think will be hard to beat is Reunion not a place okay the horse never raised a gallop anything could have happened he could have felt the horse could have had a headache he could have felt something not a place you know the, the horse can't tell you he's not going to run a place yes, yes. I could wake up in the morning and say Andrew I'm not feeling so lack I'm not going to work so well today yeah you know but a horse that's can't normal. do that yes, that yes. Normal. that's yeah. normal for you. Our, so, so tips there's never such thing as a racing certainty yes you can get a lucky people and you can get uh, good informants and, and, and that they win sometimes but I've never in my you've been in racing longer than I have in my racing I've been racing 20 odd years I, I mean I've never spoken to somebody who's given me 10 tips and all 10 okay, times they've yeah. won so I respect people's information. I respect people's opinions. Uh, but at the end of the day, if we all knew the results before the races, we wouldn't be we working. We wouldn't be working. You know, 100%. We would all be driving Ferraris. Yes. I like to hear a horse is working well. Yes. A horse looks well. A horse is, is, is not sweating up bloke, in there. Yeah. You've got the wrong blokes. I like the blokes saying, didn't eat up this morning. I think it's got a virus. The temperature is up. But I'm just going to run it anyway, just in case. Those are the ones you've got. Those are the ones that you Those want. Well, that's you you're talking from your experience, but you that's the ones I don't want. Do you remember our, our ex-operations manager, Steve Laivo? Yes. yes. He once told me a very famous quote with regards to tips. And he said, Tuvan, I'll tell you one thing always. Every now and then, a blind monkey will catch a banana. Yeah, yeah, so absolutely. you say that don't follow tips because you speak to someone and maybe if he gives you all right, like you say to one back number five in this race and it wins. Mm-hmm. It's not that it's just at the right time, at the right place yes. that I met someone yeah. and had a conversation. And I actually right, think yeah. people are a little, uh, now that you mentioned something like it, I think people are a little bit harsh on one another because it's hard to predict. You know, there's, there's, there's uh, another, another statistic to look at. There's, 180 horses r- running at a meeting. I'm just using a number. 180 horses. How many winners can there be? Eight. Yeah. So you've got to find eight of those winners out of 180 horses. Yeah, it's, what are it's, your chances? It's not easy. But I mean, I <coughs> just saying that the other, the other day, uh, one of the trainers gave me a thing. He said, all my horses will run a place today. Have a bet. They all ran bush. And I said, and now? He said, I should have found you because I, I stuck you down the middle because yeah. they... They were uh, a bit dodgy. Yeah, so. And people are also yeah. scared to give their opinion. The other day, Dean Kanemeyer, Graham Walkins phoned Dean Kanemeyer <coughs> about a first time. And he said, Dean, tell me about this horse. He said, I'm and, and Dean's a, a gentleman of the turf. He tells it as it is. Oh, good man. And, and he said, you know, Graham, he said, the horse has shown me nothing. We were going to retire this horse. Uh, Told you, that's the one to bet. That's the one to bet. <laughs> you know, we worried about this horse. We just want to give him one run before he retires, but I, I can't give you any confidence. Horse and he was at the price? Uh, 16, 17 to 1. It romped home first time out. Well, I you told know. you. <laughs> These things happen, you know. It's, just, it's the same as the other way. You think to yourself, my horse can't lose, it doesn't win. Yeah. You yeah. think your horse can't win, it wins. Yeah. I mean, it's it's, it's no, unpredictable. The, the best advice is saying, well, this is the horse's <coughs> last run. Yeah. Always have win in place. Yeah, because the horse Always. seems to be listening. Yeah, but... My, my advice is about tips because you asked the question and we digressed a bit is look at listen to people's opinion listen to people's tips if you get tips 
But don't let that be the be all and the end, end all. all. Look at the form. Make your own decisions. Look at the horses in the parade ring. Look at the horses going to start, which is what I do, and, and I'm nowhere near successful. So, what do you need to be to be successful? So, so yeah. look at the horses. I think I think one of the start. good things to be yes. successful is coming to the finishing post. Yeah, track and ball. Why so? Yes, <laughs> on, on race day. Yes, yes. Me, I'm not advertising. I'm just calling a spade a spade. Yes, <laughs> and you can see them going down see the shoot. See them going down the shoot. Yeah, that's you know, a bit of more yeah, interactive it, it's, vibe. It's, so so tips. Yeah, I, it's nice to get tips. It's nice to hear horses that are fancy that are working mm. well. But uh, for me, it's not a if if a person, a jockey or a trainer gives you a tip. For me, it's not a yeah. not a well, not a full barn conclusion. Quite a, quite a good thing to do is to take your bets before you come onto the race course or before you listen to all the bullshit, uh, and yeah. then when you do hear all that rubbish, then then cancel add, it. Add oh. no, well, oh, no, 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 will work out and you'd have to listen to some bloody bonehead who says this is a good thing yeah, it's yeah. your mate and who yeah. said he heard it from yeah. some oak and he heard it from this oak and heard it from that oak yeah. and it and sucks but when you look at the form of that horse and he got no form at all and you you took your bets earlier and said hey I've got the best horse yeah. and that donkey goes and wins yeah. and your one runs and, 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 and then what is the explanation yeah, I mean, yeah, like yeah. somebody else gave me a great explanation I said how did this <laughs> formless horse work yeah. it's so easy it ran faster than the others <laughs> you know and that's the only explanation you can find yeah. you know not even the best form study in the world can find some of the results yeah. it happens it's racing you know they're all sometimes you write a great article i write a better one than you once every 10 years so it happens every now yeah. and again you know but yeah. i tell you for for people out there um, go on to racing post in america uh, the uk the, the uk thing that there's a, a an article on stradivarius uh with john gosden and read Good that off. article it's mm, it'll open your eyes to to you know, people have got all these conspiracy theories yes. and things like that saying, yeah, well, some horses are faster than others and all that and they're treated badly because these are bad horses and that, so they only treat the, the good horses better and feed them better and work them better and then the rest Give it the Woolworths tape here, yeah, those horses. Yeah, so they all get tra- treated the all same. All get treated the same, same, whether it's a group one horse yeah. or a maiden. And yeah. Yeah. Said, one, one of the, the uh, observations that he made, he said the, the top horses have got fortitude, they've got a bit of heart. He said they're not generally faster than the other horses but when it comes to a, 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 a finish they will fight on whereas sure. the other horses will just say ah, ah. turn it up and yes, yes. turn in the uh, towel uh, so to say turn, guts throw in hot the towel. so it's yeah. guts and hot so <laughs> if you ever get a chance go to the racing post and, and look up that, that article on, on, on Stradivarius the Stradivarius has won how many group ones yeah, yeah. yeah. many many, many, many yeah. Yeah. And, and John Glossen it's a brilliant brilliant piece of thing uh, Lee Mottershead wrote, just wrote the article you know what also irritates me the most, and, and, and I have people that still do it today. I get lots of friends and family, mainly family, that'll phone and say, you know, uh, um, and this comment is directed at, f- at, at friends, not family. Uh, Patrick. No, not, not Patrick. <laughs> uh, you know, you'll get, the, they'll phone and say, what do you like today? And I'll say, oh, no, I've spoken to Andrew, and he likes number one and number two. And, and say you have a good day they'll never phone and say well geez that was great well yeah. done but have a bad day they'll yeah. phone you back and say geez you useless yeah. tips are shocking <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about and that's what irritates me because you're never going to get it right all the time 100% you know sometimes you have a good run I have a bad run you have a good run and and t- for, for the public to expect presenters and, and racing analysts like yourself like uh, Matthew Stevens like uh, the list goes on every presenter in the world to predict who's going to run first second third and fourth in every race I mean, it's ludicrous. Yeah. It's impossible. You can't do that. Well, I so must be bloody good because no one finds me. No, you must be brilliant. You <laughs> never make a mistake. Of course you don't. So the, just, yeah, everyone should cut one another some slack. Help bounce ideas off ideas. What do you like? What don't you like? I mean, today at the track and ball finishing post, I've already taken my bets for today at the Vol, and I was at the counter, and uh, Ricky came up to me, and he said, there's my... I've, I like these two horses. That's my bet for today. He's sharing that information. Yeah. If they win, that's fantastic. If they don't win, it's racing. Yes. What can you do? I'm not going to go and hunt them no, down. No, we we, had, a, we had that lunch with Graham Hawkins yesterday. That was an day, interesting yesterday. story. Was an interesting story. I mean, and in the days when he was a bit, bit short of cash, he used to be like, almost like a professional punter. Yeah. Uh, and he had th- uh, two or three mates. They each used to do their homework, and then they used to get together. Have a meeting, uh, a, a about meeting the meeting. Oh. about the race meeting. About the race meeting. And and work out the form. Because the blokes every, and, and they used to discuss 
no, you might like that horse and the other blokes say, well, I don't like it because of this and this. And he said, but I like it because of this and this. So they used to take combined pick sixes so then? No, no, they didn't combine. Oh, okay. So they all, they sat together. They did. And they their, bounced their notes they bounced off each other, bounced their, bounced their together, thoughts. And then they took their own bets. Okay. So it was, yeah. a, sort of, it was yeah. sort of a case of, you know, it, 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 it's it was like, like a, a brainstorming place. Brainstorming. Yeah. brainstorming. Yeah. Yeah. But at the end of the day, they chose their own bets and they made yeah. it, which I think is the right thing to yeah. do. But And he said so many times they used to pick up on horses. One another would miss horses. Or, yes. And he would add in, you know, if I, I didn't pick out, say, for argument's sake, this horse fade to black. And, I, you know, and you say, look, this horse fade to black. It ran well. And I, oh, sure, but I missed that. He puts it in. Yeah. He, you know, it, it has saves his picture. Yeah, but he's like, he found that horse Wonderboy yesterday. Um, it was, fourth, thir- was it? 33 to 1 ran third ran third yeah paid 5 rand or something a place yeah, yeah. sure like uh, I, I found a good horse on July day was uh, Zania and uh, okay, 75 Zania. to 1 and uh, I only put 3 horses in my pick 6 uh, that okay. and I went out 1 out of my pick 6 I was gutted in the 5th sure race sure and even are. putting a Zania there in the pick yeah. 6 and I had Casimir as well too because I remember in the 12th uh, that in the horse ran of July it was the favourite and it finished dead last and hey, I see, you know, the night before, I'm studying the card, I'm saying, Zania, what, 33 to 10 favorite, last time out, finished, what, 12 out of 12? I said, shoe in, this has to be. So, okay, going so out is a yeah, But you can get yeah. into trouble. I remember a long time ago, um, Terry Ryan was trained a horse called Out of Step, trained by Anthony, uh, ridden by Anthony Del Pesh for the July. He was, a, he was still an apprentice at the time. It was 33 of 42 one or something, and I, I tipped it in the witness. The bloke phoned the editor, said, listen, fire this prick. <laughs> he said he doesn't know what he's talking about. How can he tip this horse to win the July? Well, it didn't win. He ran fourth. But, I mean, he paid like sure. 10 or 12 rand a place. place yeah, yeah, that's better, better but to take. But also to whoever it was that phoned your boss to say, fire this beep, beep, beep. Yeah. I mean, unacceptable. Why say that? Why? Yeah. You know, well, I well, mean, well, you know it's the an game. opinion. Yeah, you I know, know the game, game, but it's an opinion. You yeah. know, I mean, why why, why look to oh, gun for somebody to get mis- them to lose their job? I the public. Yeah. Yeah. How can you I, be, I, I Plymouth Rock yesterday. I thought it might win it ran lost. Okay, that's well, your opinion. Like, you know, I don't, don't even know, know why jockeys take so much of slack as well from punters. Like, in the outlet, if I were to walk in, the jockey loses the race and then they'll be swearing the TV like you can hear. And then I think to myself, why is it? He's yeah. not doing this on purpose. He's because he, if he wins the race, he's getting money. So he's definitely going to try to win the race. Absolutely. He's not. He does not looking at you here staying in unit three and yes, thinking to myself, hey, "I'm going yeah, to try." To absolutely, I agree yeah. with you. And, and it's 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 hard. Yes, you know you might. You, you, well, they say talking from your pocket and all the rest of it. And we've all done it, I suppose. But at the end of the day, everyone wakes up in the morning to try and do their best. Yes. Everyone in racing, you in racing, you come to work to do your best. He wants to write a good article. I want to, uh, you know, uh, try and give as much information or whatever to the public and present well. Uh, jockeys come, they want to compete. So, yes. yeah, it's... it's, it's it all it boils down wants. to the fact that you must come to track and ball at the finishing post. Yes. And do your cash <laughs> <laughs> in a um, in a very mild manner. Very we mild manner but, yeah. you, but you'll leave happy. Even yeah. you lost your money. Yeah, you'll have had a good experience. Yeah. Yeah. Entertainment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's entertainment. It's yeah. called, it's, you're paying for entertainment. That's what you do. You yeah. go to the movie house. You pay a uh, hundred rand. You watch a movie. You go away. You come to the races. You, you pay your hundred rand. You might go yeah, home well, and lose all the winner, but you've had a good time. You lost your cash. You can come here and you can make some cash. Can make some bucks. Yeah, yeah. Now, on that note. The news, because we need to go through the card quickly, and we uh, uh, stay stay with us, because we want to. You know, you can add anything to the card if you want. Uh, okay, perfect. Uh, if you might not have studied or whatever the case is, but that's fine. But the main news, I think, the main news is is definitely uh, this beautiful venue. This beautiful venue. This fresh blue and white color. Yeah. Uh, lovely lights. Uh, open facilities. Lovely big glass. There's the race course. Right on our uh, next to our table, what a spot! Right on the and finishing and post. And really, yeah. I must say, as part of the Gold Circle team, I, I'm proud to be sitting. I in think this they should have changed the name to Pass the Post. Uh, to Pass the Post, eh? Yeah, boy. Because here you only back horses that already passed the post. Pass <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. I didn't yeah. like that Not one. The finishing, no. post. <laughs> the finishing post over there. Okay, <laughs> Pass the Post. <laughs> okay, well, uh, whatever it is, but you get the drift. It's, you get where the say. But just going back to 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 uh, my Matthew. closing. To go, to go to our closing comment about tips and, 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 and selections and, and analysis and your mate phoning you, the editor, and saying, fire the guy. 
I mean, we don't need any of that. That's, that's nonsense because yeah. you know, you're not looking to middle the public. You try and look for some value. Yeah. Yes. You also don't want to get told, oh, that Andrew Harrison, he only tips odds on. Yeah. You want to try and look for a bit of value as well because there are a lot of punters that punt favorites. Definitely. There's also some punters that want the value. They're like the outsiders, Correct. backing two, three horses at 16 to 1. It's a case of middling the public. It's a case of find, trying to find some value. That's no, they, probably, they, that they, might they, not win. You know, everybody's got their sort of their, their methods that they use. I know, I know Stuart Ramsey, people who used to follow racing a long time ago. Stuart's a bit old now. But, I mean, he used to, used to divide the card up into um, the half. Yes. And all the short price horses, all the long price horses. And he used to take a couple of short price horses, then he would try and find a long price. Somewhere that had an upset chance. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, he, and he was quite successful. Okay. Let's uh, go through the card. Thurvin, uh, I think yeah, all that's left before we go through the card is to, to wish you and the whole track and ball team well. No, thank you so much uh, for the time for yeah, we can present yeah, it's, uh, it's, the finishing post out in. It's a wonder and you have done some beautiful videos and yeah. I'm sure you'll do some more. Yes. And, and we look forward to as, as Gold Circle staff and racing people to bring our friends, to bring our family and, and this is going to be my new tote now. Uh, although the track and ball I'm gaining, uh, Riverside is 50 meters from my house. But uh, this is a lovely <laughs> venue. And, oh, and, thank and, you. And we hope to see you in one of our more Tawanda and I more social videos. Yes. Uh, definitely, yes, we would. Uh, no, yeah, and thank good, you for yeah giving this place a little more exposure because it was. Uh, when is the official opening? So yesterday was our first day, which we first day of trading. Uh, first day of trading. Uh, on the 29th, we're having another launch, okay. which is a bigger launch that we're the having. 29th, yeah, right? that's next week, Wednesday. Uh, okay, I think actually the GTV team are broadcasting from here. On yes, that day. yes, 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 yes. Okay, so that's fantastic. Okay, 29th. Yeah. And there's a horse in uh, at the Val, a uh, turf and tain that's absolutely romping home. Ah, you see, and you talk, are you superstitious? I am a little bit superstitious. Little bit superstitious. I'm yeah. not really superstitious, but watch that black cat behind you. Uh, <laughs> for me, when the TV freezes, with 150 meters to go and the TV freezes, that's the worst for me. Uh, okay. Uh, and well there's nothing I can do about back it. To another loser. No, no, no especially when they heads up, heads down. I did a bit, yeah, and uh, just having a look at your uh, for number five. It would be the like Sandy race. Bickett when he was commentating on the Met with politician. Yes. The you know, politician was well, way back in the turning for home, and he said, the politician says he's, he's going to battle to win from there, and then he, was, he went into a bloody coughing fit. And <laughs> <laughs> went across the line and said, and politicians won it. Okay, well, there's not much more, Andrew, that we can add to uh, the exposure that we wanted to give the track and ball uh, finishing post here. And, but Thuvan, thanks for your story. We could have spoken for longer, yeah. but uh, you've given us a rough idea of how you got into the game and your passion, your humor, your, your, your everything is, is infectious. No, and thank just, you for that. And uh, we wish you all the best. You no, know? thank you. And thank and you. Uh, I know every time Thuvan walks past our office window, I open the window and shout at him and he shouts back at me. And yeah. It's good fun. And yeah. No, I enjoy it. And uh, just wish you all the best here, and, and we urge everyone to come and support this venue because really, I, I'm hugely impressed of what I've seen. Yeah, today. yeah my punters always complain that they, they get the short end of the stick when it comes to facilities. Well, it has a glorious, yeah, it has a facility. glorious facility. Yeah. Glorious yeah. Comfortable chairs, bar facility, food facility. But thanks very much. Slot facility, Slots yeah. Okay. Smoking and non-smoking, so it is a exclusive area. We're just trying to keep it just to cater to all walks of punters, you yeah. could say. Well, thank no, you. No, thank you for the time thank and you. the exposure for track and ball and the finishing post. Thank you. We'll leave you. Ask you to go and continue with your work no problem. I'll be coming to take some more bets just now good man good man <laughs> right, take care thank you guys thank you there we go Andrew Thuvan uh, Thuvan Pillay what a, you, first of all first question is do you remember the days when you and I were as young as he was no or well, young as he is I should say no hey Good, uh, good, uh, good youngster and, and a, a nice guy yeah, no, to he's have. He's enthusiastic, which is cool. Yeah, he's oh. enthusiastic. He certainly is. Okay, let me uh, yeah, move your uh, chair. No, no, no. Let uh, me uh, talk to you now because we want to talk about the race meeting that's taking place on Sunday. But back to Thuvan. Yeah, just uh, got such a such a personality, such a humour, and and he's a young guy that's keen, and he's a guy that you want to have in your on your team. Yeah, no, no. If you can carry it through and and, and uh, get the place buzzing, yeah. Okay, what, now, what you need. let's talk about, uh, just shows you life, eh? you've got one legend and yourself is on his way out to retirement, oh, yeah, yeah. another young hope to be legend. I like to be called a legend. Yeah, yeah. now you are, and, uh, you can be yeah, the, yeah. I don't need to blow smoke up anyone's you know what, because uh, it's true, you've been in the game, you've served the game for a long time. Let's talk about racing on Sunday. First race <coughs> is a 1,000 metre maiden paid for fillies and mares. 25 past 12. Um, start me off. What did you tip? I think, uh, I think Gavin, uh, Gareth Van Zyl is going to have a, 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 
a really good day. It's been a lot of runners. It's either a very good day or a very bad day. We'll see by the end of the, of the meeting. But I think uh, you'll start off with Sky Glitter. Those two runs were Yeah, she had two runs in yeah, but then in group company and yes. now going back to maidens. I mean, um, she's had a bit of a break, but I think she could be a bit too classy. The only one I'm worried about is our Emily Michael Robertson's horse. Well, funnily enough, it's, it's a case of great minds think alike or fools never differ. Don't answer that. Uh, Sky Glitter, I think, will be very hard to beat. And I do respect our Emily simply because Michael Roberts had a first-time winner the other day. He doesn't normally rev up his first-timers. Uh, but this owner, the Gerica family, are already in banging form. So our Emily, if our Emily had to run well on debut, I wouldn't Yeah, I know, because he was, he was quite uh, open in his, his comment. He said, if not too green to run a good race. And yeah. I, um, it's a Rafif, and the Rafifs are firing. Okay, the second race on the card is at one o'clock. A maiden played for fillies and mares over 1,400 metres. Another Van Zale, Indigo Fields. Yeah, yes. Uh, uh, um, looks to be the one that sets the standard, Andy. But this horse, number 14, and we danced. I was hugely impressed with his debut. I was, it was with her debut. I was hugely impressed with her debut. And I was hugely impressed with her as a specimen. A gorgeous filly. And there's already been a winner out of that uh, Kingsmead Crystal form line. Yeah, so that, that's the benefit of being on course, so that you can see those sort of things. So, yeah, okay. Andrew I'm not Dance, saying she's a good thing, yeah, I'm just no, saying a yeah. horse that we've got yeah, to respect. Know, Indigo Fields, Bay Breeze, and. And uh, and, 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 we and, dance. and We Dance. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly the three I marked Indigo Fields, Bay Breeze, who ran a cracker last time, and, and We Dance. But Andrew's tip number one, Indigo Fields, probably is the one they all have to beat. The third race is a maiden played for fillies and mares over 1,750 meters. I'm quite strong on a horse here, so let me start. I quite like number six, Black Joker. Had her first run uh, for Justin Snaith last time out. It was a much better effort. Samanga Kamalo rides. She is a five-year-old mare, so she's obviously had issues along the way. But for me, if she can improve again in this very shallow field, I think she'll be hard to beat. No, yeah, well, she'll have to improve a little bit. I think Sparkling Flame, I think Mark Miller's uh, filly number seven. I mean, she's due a change of, uh, change of luck. Uh, and I spoke to Julie Dittmer this morning. Julie, Gith, a Julie Guthrie. Amble in ran a cracker. Amble in ran a cracker, yeah. So, because we were laughing, we went Mike Salter to to get into the winner's enclosure and then uh, take about four days off while he keeps on talking, yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> he, he's been, he's been at, uh, he's been had a winner, has he, Mike? Oh, he's Mike, yes, yeah, he has. That is winner, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, but uh, his mates say he's been vaccinated with a gramophone needle. <laughs> yeah, he loves to chat. Fourth race is a 65 handicap, the race named after us. Uh, the Forces to Follow podcast, 65 handicap over 1,950 metres. To be quite frank with you, I don't have a selection here. I'm no, putting in the field. It's the field. It's a, it's a terrible race. I don't, you, anything can win. I went, I went brigade because uh, Paul Gasby's stable seems to have hit the, hit the form at the moment. Hit their so, straps, yeah. yeah. And uh, Fort Wiley, I know I spoke to Tini Prince yesterday. He said the horse is jumping out of his skin, but it's a race where you put everything in. Yeah. Just before we continue, are you going to the races on Sunday? Oh, I might make a guest appearance. Okay, yes. well, I'm not, and no. I have a runner in the last race. So if it happens to win, you're most welcome to oh, be there, please. Yeah. Thank Pleasure. You. But you're normally not there by the last race. You've gone no, up to work. To the, <laughs> the fifth race is the Pinnacle Stakes over 2,400 meters. A small field, but uh, I found a bit of a lurker here. I haven't taken the betting down, and I'm hoping that number six, Payback the Money, could represent some value because I think he's going to run well. No, well, he's, he's had a, a warm-up, uh, and he stays well. But I think you've got to beat Favour. I fancied him for the Gold Cup, and, it, yes. and he went wrong. He went wrong in about the 2-4. He would have maybe needed that last run. And I think he needed his last run, but I, I thought he was a good thing in the Gold Cup, and I was devastated when he, when he pulled up lame. Um, so I think he might be the right one, and I think he's going to beat Robbie Hill Electric Surge. Okay. That's the assessment. Those are my two. Okay. And I like payback the money. So maybe some three-way boxed exactors could be the way to go. The sixth race. Let's move on to the sixth race. Another competitive event. Hooves of Troy, Mashari, After the Rain. Those are the three of the nine that I've picked out. Yeah, After the Rain is a very, very nice, it's a very pretty grey horse. Yes. Uh, I think uh, I think quite useful. Um, the rest, I think, are fairly exposed. And I think uh, he might be the right one. Okay, so uh, you're going for after the uh, rain to reel off the hat-trick. Samanga Kamala. 
Hey, he's uh, riding out of his skin at the moment. Phew, I tell you, uh, I so enjoyed my interview with him yesterday in the last race. He's such a lovely human being yeah. and uh, a great rider that goes with it is Samanga Kamala. The seventh race is at four o'clock, a 70 handicap for fillies and mares, a thousand meters. Uh, so the pace will be on. How good is this whole Sweet Symphony? How good is she? We don't, we don't she? know. I we mean, what know. I saw on debut, wow, she bolted clear. Yeah, she bolted clear. She got the same, um, the same merit rating mark as Marquette. Um, so, yeah, and, and, and Tabisa takes one and a half off. So if the Stripes have got it right, then Marquette should beat Sweet Symphony. And then you've got to beat Vavacious. Yeah, that's got a chance uh, that, too. That's, that's come good at the time. And why can't uh, Ginger's Path to Glory run well? Well, he wouldn't go in the pens last time, so a bit would be nervous. It needs to. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, Sweet Symphony, if she's as good as they think she is, and if she's improved off that run, and she's so quick, she might run them right off their feet yeah. again. But as you say, Vivacious and Marquette, those horses have got uh, big chances that's too. That's the trifecta. Okay, let's move on to the eighth race. The Hollywood Bets Bright Future mirrored rated 72 handicap over a thousand meters. Chief Executive, good thing. <laughs> From your lips to God's ears. Uh, we certainly, he was a little unlucky last time. He certainly was. Go and watch the replay. Uh, he has tightened up off that run, and uh, we're hoping for a big performance from him, but I don't know if it's going to be as easy as that. No, I think this is a tough race. Though. Because there are a couple that have got chances. Uh, uh, Mount Greylock can win again. Noble Sniper Noble was Sniper. impressive. Yeah. We all chummies. You like Noble Sniper? I like Noble Sniper, but uh, with not too much confidence. Eh? Uh, Gareth and uh, Gareth Fenzel, as you say, has got some really good runners. Yeah, he so could have a good, good day. It'll be a big day or a bad day, one of those days. Yeah. Anything else to add, uh, Ashburton wise? Everything okay yeah, up Ash on the hill? Fine. All the boys were happy this morning. I need to come up. Dunks and see was cheerful. I need to come up and see the horses and come and see you at track one of these days. But it's just a, a matter of trying to get up there, you know, get yeah, find no, the time. Long weekend. Out of your way. Long weekend. Long weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Got to come back to Durban tomorrow. Okay. Uh, for a family function. Yeah, bro. Okay, nothing wrong with that. Well, I think that's a wrap from us, from uh, Warren Thuvin. Thanks very much to Thuvin and to the whole track and ball team uh, here at the finishing post that have looked after us. And Andrea, I, I think uh, the second race is a few minutes away. Let's sit back and maybe oh, enjoy yeah, yeah, a cold yeah, drink yeah. and, and uh, we'll enjoy, cash up and let's go and enjoy the facility <laughs> and, and uh, head off home. But thanks very much to you and to the whole team. It's been wonderful. As always, uh, get your bets on timelessly. Be safe. That's the most important. And uh, we'll see you from the number one box. But what would be even better is if we could see you at the finishing post.